Hello, my name is Mike Batten. I'm here with uh, Western States Metal Roofing, and today we're going to discuss PBR conditions. We're going to be dealing with the gable condition and the high peak condition. We're going to miter the laps and show you the connection, the six inch connection, and talk a little bit about fasteners for this project. <laughs> This is the Metal Roofing Learning Channel, brought to you by Western States Metal Roofing, where you can find a variety of colors and finishes, all while saving by buying Factory Direct. Use of the following video content is subject to the warning, disclaimer of warranties, and limitation of liability as set forth on this screen. All right, so what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna set the level, we're gonna make an inch and a quarter uh, tab right here to fold down to close the cell on the gable end before we make our final cut so that way we can close off the end right here seeing as this condition is a little bit exposed right here because we didn't lit, finish off with a panel that was a partial panel coming all the way to the end and from here to here it's about typically about six inches which is this distance to this distance right here so that way it sits on there perfect and the six inches is from there to, to the beginning of that kick. All right, so what we're gonna do is the cell height is an inch and a quarter tall, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark an inch and a quarter uh, cap on the end. We're gonna mark it all the way here, and we're gonna delete part of it, and then we're gonna fold it under and tuck it back. So first you're gonna do is you're gonna mark it an inch and a quarter back. And then I'm gonna mark this side, leaving just enough of this so we can tab it all the way in and make it nice and clean. Then we're gonna cut this tab off right here. And we're gonna leave this tab right here so we can connect it and fold it back on the bottom. Then we're gonna rotate it and then we're gonna cut off the face. Leave your tab so you have a rivet to put through. You want to trim it off just at a slight angle as so it clears as it folds under to the back side. So what I have to do right here is you have to make a relief cut right here so we can fold this front face down and we'll fold this small tab and we'll trace the line to connect them showing the taperedness of the slope on there. What we do is make our slit cut. We want to cut and relief it just enough to where they don't bind up when they intersect with each other because it is a compound miter. Take this, fold it under. For a nice, clean, tight bend, I would come back with my tin hammer. That way when we overlap the secondary piece, it's nice and clean. Boxed in. And tap it down. Then we're gonna come back and cut the tab straight across. Just so you see all these marks on here, the PVC is still on here and I'm using a dark Sharpie so you can see the lines better as we're doing this. And also we would put a pop rivet in here and we'll put a pop rivet in here to hold it all together. And there you have it, there's your pop rivets. 
All right, so our workspace, we're gonna measure our panels. And our panels are six, exactly 63 inches. I ran them three inches longer than the eave, but you don't wanna go much more than that for rattling on your roof during the high winds. So we have 63 inches, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure off the front. 63 inches plus I have one inch tab. Sixty three. Sixty three right here and then sixty four one extra inch for the tab. And this is the t this is the sixty three inch line, this is our tab line. All right, so what we're gonna do right here is we're gonna mark the, the hem at the mitered compound 45 right here. So this is a half inch kick, but if you were to measure off the front face to the apex point where it intersects at, it's actually only protruding out 3 eighths of an inch. So you don't wanna mark it off a half inch, it'll have an eighth inch gap in there. So right now I'm gonna mark it and notch it back. So I'm gonna leave that relief right here. This is gonna be my tab right here. And everything else is gonna be removed right here. This tab will be left on and this tab will be all removed because the peak flash will come all the way to the end and connect at this intersecting line. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start cutting this piece. We're gonna cut all our tabs and fold them over. So let's start with the cut first. We're going to rotate it. And we always cut a little bit of, at a little bit of an angle so it leaves clearance for your tabs when you fold it in. That way it doesn't catch anything. So right here, we're getting ready to cut our 45 right here. And then we'll cut this piece right here. And that 45 is gonna be the 45 that's gonna to connect to the peak cap. All right, so now after we, we cut our 45 right here, that's gonna to connect to our peak cap, we're gonna tab this and fold this in, which is gonna go on the back side of this piece right here. And now I'm going to remove the PVC. So our panel sticks out from the eave edge is four and a half inches. So we have to put a screw about four and a half inches from the end. So I'm going to do it universal so that way it matches on both ends. And then I'm going to center in here that way everything looks symmetrical. So I'm going to go to my marks and I'm going to pre-drill my holes but I'm going to center it on here. I'm gonna mark the top leg because I want the stitch screws to match identical to the other one. 
So I use 21 inch spacing, but I come up four and a half off the eave. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark my spacing. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-drill the holes. That way it lines up and it's easier for me on this small mock-up. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna go and we're gonna prep this panel. So we have to put the 7 8 3 16 sticks butyl tape on here. And then we will attach the gable. And then after that, we will be putting the top closures on it. All right, so we're gonna use 7 8 butyl tape, 3 3 16 6 for this application. What we're gonna do right now is we're gonna run the butyl tape up this leg, and then we're gonna attach butyl tape also to the bottom leg where the screws go, detaching back to the panel. First thing you want to do, connect it on the end, apply a little pressure. If it is super cold outside, it's a good idea to stick the tape out in the sun and let it warm up just a little bit so it sticks to it because when it's really cold, it doesn't stick as quite as well. After we butyl tape this right here, we also have to butyl tape the bottom edge which is going to connect to the bottom panel right here. So we'll do the same thing as we did the other one. We use the same butyl tape, seven eighths wide. And there you have your butyl tape application. Make sure it's sitting on that lip so that way when you put the fasteners through it, it's nice and watertight. Now we're gonna take this gable and we're gonna attach it to this and then put the fasteners in it to hold it up. Over the end, slide it nice and tight, slide it to the end. Make sure you're nice and tight. And then apply the fasteners. Make sure you're using your drill, not an impact. You don't want to over tighten on the screws. Okay, so this is the high peak cap and what we're doing right now, we're gonna do the layout for the, the kick for here to miter it to match the gable end. And then we're gonna open up the other end with a five and one so that when, if we make a piece that you have to notch another piece to slide in there, that piece will accept it. So first we're gonna do the layout on here. Then we're gonna lay that on top, mark out where it lines up. Then we're gonna attach the closures and sealant. And then we'll finish up by attaching this to the top of the finishing screws. So first we know the offset is about three eighths of an inch. So we're gonna mark that. And then we'll mark the offset to the corner here. And we'll be clearing away this right here, leaving this part left over. We're gonna leave this part attached here to overlap that one. That way we can make the final cut to make sure that we don't have any voids or gaps on the bottom end of it. And then also we'll have to mark the 3 8 to trim off the excess on that also. And this part will be removed. I like to leave the tab on there a little bit just so we can make sure that we don't leave a gap on there. So I am only leaving that on there just so we can make sure that the gap is nice and tight. So from here, we're gonna go and we're gonna test fit this just to make sure that the corner is nice and tight. And then we're gonna mark where the uh, end of the ridge cap, the peak cap will go. And then we'll apply the closure on the very top end, one inch back from this edge. What we're gonna do right here is we're gonna slide this over, overlap it to where that this is supposed to touch. As you can see, this line and that line do meet. 
So what we're going to do is we verify that it is good, so we will go and we will cut this off, flushing it off on the end. Cut that tab off where we marked it at. And then with the final application, that corner will be nice and tight. So once we make our notch and we line it up and we test fit it and we're happy with the way that the end looks on the piece, we will come back and we will mark where this goes because our closure needs to be recessed one inch back in set in caulking. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my speed square and I'm going to measure how far back off the edge and then I'm going to come back one inch. So that's going to be at three and a half inches. And I'm going to mark it in a few places. That way I know it's going to be in the exact place I want it to be. After that's done, you need to grab your closures. All right, so what we're getting ready to do right now is we offsetted one inch from the edge of the piece backwards. We're using the neoprene closures, the top end ones, the ones that go on top of the panels. See how it matches the profile and it has interlocking for big runs. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to cock the bottom end and set it in here and then connect the secondary piece to it. And it needs to be set in caulking to hold it. I'm going sparingly, I'm trying not to make a mess. So what we're going to do is we're going to find our marks. And then we will apply it to it. Note that when you have the excess right here, you have to cut it off with the razor blade and cut it off right here below the peak. That way it's still nice and tight. This piece to this piece, it's tongue and groove on there. Easy to work with. And then we're also going to apply sealant to the top. That way it gets a nice watertight seal on it. Please be generous with the caulking as you don't want to come back later for a leak. We have to put a little bit of caulking underneath this piece. Make sure your neoprene is sitting back. Make sure you get everything lined up exactly how you want it before you put your rivets in place. Once you're happy with your desired effect, go ahead and put your fasteners in on the top of the cell. I go about an inch back. There you go. Make sure you're setting your drill so you don't over crush on your washer. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put two or three rivets in here to hold this and pin it up against our nice and tight. So normally you would use the same color rivets. We're using uh, different colored rivets to stand out so that you see that we're actually using everything in the product line that we're supposed to be using. So our finishing touches will be the last four screws in the gable. You can find step-by-step -step installation videos and homeowner guides on our channel. And don't forget to show your support by hitting the like button and subscribe. Want to learn more? Check out these videos.